So hello and welcome to Sarah Gornall, um, who is the co-author of the book Coaching and Learning in Schools, along with Manny Byrne. Hello there, Sarah. Hello, Liz. Well, first of all, tell me what led you to, to write this book in the first place? Um, Manny and I were both associate lecturers at Bath Spa University, and we were working with a number of schools on developing their coaching skills. Um, and found that teachers were very excited. Uh, generally, amongst heads and school leaders, there seemed to be a feeling that coaching had potential and could work, and um, not very much evidence around of it working. So part of the purpose of the book was to make the co case for coaching by providing easily accessible summaries of research and case studies. And, and actually, what I like about the book is that there are lots of case studies in there which illustrate very practically how coaching has an impact. So what kind of impact did you find that it was having in, within the schools and education? Well, we found that it was empowering for leaders. Um, it took away the loneliness of making decisions. So people may, became more solution focused and made better decisions. Uh, and leaders became calmer and more confident. So there were emotional benefits as well as practical outcomes. They were managers uh, in particular learned how to uh, trust others better and delegate responsibility more and to be more autonomous and independent in running projects. Teachers um, learned different techniques for using in the classroom and some of them those techniques allowed them to relax more and to give more independence to the learners. And we found that um, in where a group of young children were coached it together on aspects to do with behaviour and collaboration and self-management, so really the intelli uh, emotional intelligence agenda, their uh, achievement in school academically also improved. So, so there's lots of, of evidence, I suppose, to, yeah. to say, look, this, this does work. And, and I know as a coach, you're very passionate about coaching. W what is it, if you could sort of sum up the essence of, of coaching and how it, how it can impact in schools, what is it that, that really has, like, sort of lights you up as a coach? It lights me up when people have insight when they suddenly realize that they have choice and control um, and they become more independent and self-directed. It lights me up in when they have access to their own wisdom uh, and they direct their learning um, for the future. And in a way, I mean, I love, I love the word wisdom because I think um, as coaches, in, in one way or another, we are all enabling our coaches, our clients to access their own wisdom. And I think this, this links in beautifully with, with learning. So tell me about coaching and learning. How do they, how do they sit together? Coaching as its best is non-directive and enables reflection. And the coach demonstrates belief in the potential of the individual they're working with. And it's collaborative. So it enables someone to reflect on the thing that they're learning and decide how they're going to learn it, get new perspectives and create action plans for learning, chunk it down uh, and be encouraged on the way. So pe it, it helps people to become independent, autonomous learners who love what they're doing. And in a way, what you're providing for teachers and for leaders and for staff in schools is, is the language and the skills of coaching, which kind of permeate then their conversations. This isn't something you have to, to add on to all the work you're already doing. The style of coaching is something that can really make an impact to the culture of the whole school, I guess. Yes, um, I think you can coach someone in 10 minutes, laser coaching. <laughs> um, and it's best to do so with permission because you don't want every conversation that you have in the staff room to end up as a coaching conversation. Sometimes you just want to say, oh my gosh, there's too much going on at the moment. It's just 
getting in my hair or it's just too much. Um, but other times, uh, a short conversation about, so what is it you're trying to achieve? What is it you're actually finding difficult? Um, how will you know that you've really made a difference here? What might help you? A few very focused questions, uh, which are open and attentive listening can help someone move on and the burden goes. I just, I just love it when you're working with someone and you can see that they have become lighter and more energetic as a result of that. But if you've got lots of people in the school who all support each other in that way, believe in each other's potential, give each other space, help each other to reflect, encourage each other, ask open questions to, to encourage the independent exploration, then it, it becomes a very collaborative, empowering um, and energetic system. And to finish off then, I guess the, the, the book then, just to give it a bit of context, it, it takes you through the, what coaching is and isn't, like some yeah. of the, you know, coaching, mentoring, training, teaching, what's all the differences between these different terminologies. Um, but also one of the things I like is very much the practical application, the tools that you, you suggest that can be used very easily and adapted um, with, with children or, or with teams and adults. That, that seems like a very practical section of the book. Thank you. Um, that, that really came out of working with teachers who said, oh, it's all very well learning these skills and uh, having these conversations between ourselves as we practice, but how do we apply it in, in the school? How do we apply it in, the, in our classrooms? Because uh, we haven't got time to sit down and do one-to-one -one work with every single child. We could see that would be beneficial. So we, we've demonstrated a lot of tools that you can use in different contexts, some of them with groups. So for instance, you can use um, a coaching wheel with a group to help them to sort out amongst their many different pressing uh, demands, uh, which are the priorities, um, where they are now against where they ideally want to go and what their next might be. And that's all very practical. It's stuff that you can use and adapt in your own situation if you are a teacher or you are in a school. So it's been an absolute delight to talking with you today, Sarah. Thank you very much. The book, just as a reminder, is called Coaching and Learning in Schools by Sarah Gornall and Manny Byrne. Thank you for your time.